Hey, what's going on? Ryan Kohler here. Uh, I'm guessing that hopefully you know me. I have been in the HR world for a long, long time, and I wanted to reach out today, introduce you to the new project I'm working on called the GBT for HR project, tell you a little bit about my new BFF, ChatGBT, um, kind of give you a sneak peek into what I'm working on and the value that we're going to bring, tell you about some new great webinars we got coming up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but if you don't know me, I spent the last 20 years in the HR world. Um, <clears throat> got in here almost accidentally, asked to build an applicant tracking system, built iApplicants and Applicant Pro, which was then white labeled by about 20 different payroll companies and background check companies and assessment companies to use for their ATS. We basically bootstrapped and scaled that from zero to 10,000 clients, almost 300 employees um, over the course of a 15 year period, 10 years in a row on the 5,000 list. And beyond just being able to get access to a ton of knowledge and data and seeing how employers from every industry and every size um, struggled or did well with hiring and giving them advice and, and tips and suggestions on how to tweak it and then being able to see how that worked. I also started a little company called Refer and over the last five years, we've sent over 2 billion emails to job seekers with job alerts, with career advice, with ideas on how to how to apply, how to rewrite their resume, et cetera, et cetera. And so really around the hiring space, I don't know anybody that has as much data and access to information, but also built my own company and hired my own team. Scaling up to 300 employees was not easy, that's for sure. Uh, heavily female in the tech world, um, in a very competitive tech environment in Utah. But when COVID hit, we were struggling to get applicants just like everybody else. And so we did our own key study over the last two years. Now this is our third year. We massively increased our applicants per hire, our applicants per job, our number of referrals, the, the participation of our employees in our employee referral program. When I left Applicant Pro nine months ago, we were turning away 500 applicants per hire, 25 employee referrals. And no, that wasn't because we were spending a ton of money on job boards. In fact, our monthly job board budget was zero. It wasn't because I was paying ridiculous amounts of money for employee referrals. My employee referral payout is $250 per hire. The reason why we were doing so well came down to really two main things. Number one, we knew who our targets were and what their pain was and what they were trying to solve by looking for a new job. And number two, we wrote amazing job ads. It actually had little to do with distribution of that content until we nailed that our job ads were great and our target would like them. Nine months ago, I stepped down as CEO of Applicant Pro and took some time off. To be honest, I accidentally went on a sabbatical. I was going back and forth between St. George, Utah and Cabo, Mexico, hanging out down there with my laptop and my 15-year-old introduced me to ChatGBT. Um, and I've spent the last nine months, 40 hours a week, playing with ChatGBT. Now, clearly for me as a, a tech entrepreneur, as an employer, as somebody who has been speaking and, and coaching and mentoring HR people for a long time, um, my approach to ChatGPT was different than most people. I sat down over the last nine months and went person by person or role by role and said, what would I do if I was, you know, Ryan, the startup guy? What would I do if I was one of Ryan's employees? If I was a marketer, a sales rep or a support person, what would I do if I was an HR person? What would I do if I was a job seeker? How could I use this tool, this, you know, as a personal writing assistant to amplify not just how fast I could do things, but how well I could do them. And while nine months may not seem like a long time in the tech world, that's an insanely long time. Um, most likely, you don't know anybody who spent more time in ChatGPT than me, let alone having the context of the HR world, of the startup world, of HR tech and hiring. And so it really is kind of a unique perspective that I bring. I just got back from National Sherm a couple weeks ago and everyone was asking a ton of questions about ChatGPT. There was maybe five sessions about ChatGPT and maybe one or two booths that had anything to do with it. One of them was mine. We were down there just talking to HR people, talking to individuals, trying to hear what people were doing and what they were seeing. I can tell you, number one, the majority of people I ran into had never even logged into ChatGPT. Those who had, had been in it for less than an hour. Just think about this for a second. If a brand new software platform came out that in the next five years was going to impact almost every job imaginable in your company, especially yours, but we're afraid or don't have the time to get in and play with it. 
So there was a ton of questions. The downside is I didn't hear a lot of great answers. And honestly, the reason is, is not a lot of people have enough context around not just how ChatGPT works, but around how businesses will end up using it and how policies and procedures and the good and the bad and, and the strengths and the weaknesses of it. There's just not very many people who are there with that context. Um, and not a lot of people knew who to ask the questions to or what the right questions were anyway. Um, I made a list of all, these are just the top 10 questions I came up with right? What are the benefits? How can we use this? What about sensitive information? We've been hearing on the news about ChatGPT. You know, what are the limitations and what are the risks? Will it be accurate? So many questions about this new piece of software and yet nobody there to answer them really and not a lot of people playing around with it to see how it works. Um, personally, I believe there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, ChatGBT or more specifically OpenAI and similar GBT type technologies, not just the chat version, but all of them because ChatGBT is just the most popular one, the most buzzy one, but they've been around forever, whether it's Jasper or Jarvis or Bard, um, you name it, we have had this type of technology around. It's been being used. It just didn't have as easy and as approachable of an interface, but most people think about something like this and say, this will make me extremely efficient. It is the up and the downside of the low hanging fruit of a piece of technology like this, meaning I can do more in less time, which makes employers think they'll be able to lay off some employees and save some money, increase their profits. The problem is that very same concept makes it extremely scary for the average employee to go and touch and use the tool because they know more efficiency at some level means fewer hours for them to work. The real key though is having a win-win approach when you're thinking about this as an employer, as a job seeker, as HR, as a manager. What, what it gives us the power to do is yes, become more efficient, but so that we can use that extra time to then become more effective. Yes, we'll be able to do things like say write a job ad in less effort, but we can spend that time to increase the experience, the value the, how good that ad is. We're looking for a win where everybody wins. We don't just wanna become more efficient to save the company money. We need to do it in a way that will increase the experience that customers have, that prospects have, that vendors have. Increasing the experience of all of us is what the real potential is to do. But what if there was a better way to kind of think about job ads and recruitment marketing and the content you create in HR, because that's where it starts. Before you start thinking about how to create a policy uh, for your entire organization or how your sales or marketers should or shouldn't be using ChatGPT, I would challenge you to start with yourself. Start by understanding the platform. And the easiest way to do that isn't to go and ask questions, although questions are great. It isn't to make policy. It's to actually build a personal relationship with the platform in question, to gather your own context and experience, not to study about it, but to study it. And that really is what I spent my last nine months doing. Um, the, the great thing that I found is when it comes to say HR and, and hiring and activation and retention, this gives us a lot of power to do recruitment marketing throughout the entire process. The problem is most HR folks struggle with recruitment marketing because of the marketing aspect. This idea that, you know, it requires creative writing. It requires somebody with a marketing mindset, somebody who understands marketing. The cool thing about it is ChatGPT is your marketing assistant if you just know how to work, excuse me, how to work with it. But when you think about marketing, we think it's all about the distribution, but it's actually about having a clear target and creating great content before you amplify it through the distribution. When I like to think about recruiting specifically as a funnel, uh, attraction through selection, this idea of focusing not on what we're looking for, but who, who do we want to clone? That is the fundamental, most important question for us to ask a manager who wants to hire. Who do you want to clone? Who do you know that would be great at this job? Show me their resume. What are they doing now? Why would coming to work for us be an upgrade for them? Because they're not going to move if it isn't. How would they know that it's an upgrade? Does our ad actually explain to them why this is a better job, a better opportunity, why we have a better culture than where they're at right now? What is the next step, the call to action? And 
Finally, how will we know when we've found one of those people? Will we have the right questions to ask, the right interview questions, etc.? The fact of the matter is this entire funnel relies on those three same things again. Number one, having a clear target. That's at the top. Number two, creating compelling and engaging and relevant content all the way through this process from requisitions and job descriptions to great job ads to application process and job screening questions and interview questions, scorecards and offer letters. The list goes on and on that great content will make the conversion rate or the percentage of people who move down this funnel go up dramatically. Great content is the number one way to decrease ghosting. Great content is the number one way to increase employee engagement, job seeker engagement, engagement across the board. When you have more compelling content, relevant, compelling, credible, when your content is great, people will be more engaged. But it isn't just the recruiting process that requires a lot of content. The entire talent engine is a hugely dependent on great content, whether it's employee reviews or career paths, whether it's plays and FAQs, whether it's new hire documents or activation and new hire training, all of this requires great content to be successful. But most people in HR are not creative writers. Um, most salespeople aren't creative writers either. It's why we rely so much on marketers. But the cool thing is, is there's another way to go about this. And that's really what ChatGPT is all about. If you want to know the best way for you to think about ChatGPT, it's that you're hiring an AI writing assistant, somebody who will write your first draft of your content. Now, this is really important when you think about it that way. Number one, it's an assistant. Think about this like it's your personal assistant. You're going to have to train it. You're going to have to give it context and work with it. You're going to have to learn how to communicate back and forth with it in a way that you guys get to that, that you know sweet spot of, of completing each other's sentences, right? Because that's really what we're after. We have to work though, if it was an employee, if it was an individual, we'd have to spend time working and interacting and going back and forth to get in that groove, to get it nailed down so that we can do it well. It wouldn't happen on the first day and it definitely wouldn't happen on the first request, but that's what a lot of people are thinking will happen with ChatGPT. You need to invest your time and effort to build that personal relationship, number one. Number two, you have to give it context. ChatGPT knows everything about everything, but nothing about you specifically or what you're trying to do or who you're trying to do it for. So when I ask a generic broad-based prompt without giving any context, without it giving any backstory, without giving any guidance, then I'm assuming or allowing ChatGPT to figure out what I mean by it. Now, the likelihood that even the smartest person in the world is going to guess what's in your head and read your mind is very low. And so as you're thinking about ChatGPT and saying, this is my AI assistant, therefore, I need to train it. Therefore, I need to get good at managing and communicating with it. Therefore, I need to give it context. And the final part is, it's creating your draft for you, not the final product. This is what solves the, is the information going to be accurate? Proofread it. This is the same thing you would do if you hired a new assistant and they were writing content for you. You would proofread their content. Over time, this really, really important content, you would continue to proofread, but you might get less and less, uh, spend less and less time doing it because your assistant is getting better at knowing what you want. Same thing happens with ChatGPT. Number two, you would do less and less proofreading of less important information, one-to-one -one communication. But one-to-many, you're most likely going to always proofread. I have an entire team of marketers. I still proofread their content that they bring to me. I still get a final once over. I still read through it because that's what you do to ensure quality when something is that vitally important. So you see, as we're jumping into ChatGPT, before you get in and actually start playing around with it, you need to know how to think about it. And that's the biggest takeaway that we can give you. Here at the HR, uh, the GBT for HR project, our goal is to create content, create training, create webinars that will help answer all of those questions all of those unknowns in your head to provide you access to uh, not just tools, but tips and templates and all that type of stuff that will help you jump ahead of the game. I'm not expecting you to spend 2,000 hours in ChatGPT to get to the point I'm at. Instead, I'm offering a shortcut. So hopefully you'll, you'll follow along. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. You can reach me at ryan at gpt4hr.com. 
www.ghostbusiness.io. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.